versions is a feature of Rome uh, that m helps you to control what is visible to the rest of the graph. Uh, so a block can exist in multiple, multiple versions. And if you choose to make a, a block a different version, it will also affect all of its children blocks and grandchildren and so on and so forth. They belong to a version. So if you want to create a new version of a block, you simply right click a bullet and select add version or while you're on it, you hit control comma. So here I'll show you say so this block here that has this information in it. If I right click it and hit add version, it's going to immediately jump me straight to the next empty version of that block. So now this is version two as denoted by that right there. If you want to navigate between versions, that first version still exists. So those blocks that I had created before, they still exist. They're just not visible anymore because we're looking at the second version of that block. So the block and all of its children, grandchildren, etc., are ex exist, but they're in that first version. If I want to navigate between those versions, I can click on this block and go back to version one. And there it is. As you can see, it still exists. Uh, so it's still there if you need to go. This is now version 2. This is version 1. Do note that when you have the versions open like this, that uh, that first block extends uh, to two line heights, as I put it in the in my notes out here. So this up here is, is just is part of that block, but this is all one block here. Um, it's not a really good notation of it because these are nested underneath. Let me pull these out. You can see this is all one block. So there's no way to differentiate this. These, these numbers up here are not really, uh, are just, uh, you know, structural here. So they're not, they're not part of this block. This is the top part of the block. So um, if I wanted to create that second version, this is the new version of the block. If I hit enter from here, I'm now no longer in that version because I've just popped out onto the top level. If I want to stay everything, I want everything else I type to stay in that, new version I have to indent this is indented in the new version so now that's going to go away when I go back to the original version this one has this it tells you what to do here this one just says this is indented in the new version if it were back on that top level it's going to stay even though I've gone back to the new version so in order for something to be included in a version it has to be in either it within that block of the version or a child or a grandchild block block um, underneath that. Uh, so that's how you you create the versions and how you navigate between them. Now, an interesting feature here with versions is it helps you control what you have accessible in the graph. So if you need to reference some, if you have a reference to something in version one, say in version one here, um, I have a picture of a goat. That's a got a picture of a goat. I did that because I knew there'd be nowhere else in my graph that'd be referenced. If I click on this, you can see there's a reference to it here. Look, there's a reference to a picture of a goat uh, on that version's page. However, and uh, if I were to click over to version two, where there is no reference to picture of a goat, if I go here now and go searching for picture of a goat page, it does not appear in the references because uh, to the graph, that first version does not exist. It's still there. It's safe. It's not going anywhere, but the graph can't see it anymore. This is really useful for controlling versions of multiple drafts of things. Uh, and I have it in this, in this setting because I use it for drafts, sort of keeping the canon draft of a chapter or a blog post or a document of some sort. Um, it makes sure that previous versions of that draft simply don't exist uh, to, the, uh, to the rest of the graph, but keeps them there if I should ever need to go back and view that process, that's available. So uh, it's not accessible um, if it's if it's in that. Uh, one little small exception to that, it isn't really an exception to it's being accessible, um, but if I wanted to, for instance, open this version in the sidebar, so I'm on version one here and I wanna open that in the sidebar, it'll open version one over here. I can go to version two over here without losing version one in the sidebar. And that's particularly useful if I want to create multiple drafts of something. I can still see the previous draft over here um, while the second is open over here. Now, this version over here, I can't move out of it because this is now kind of locked in place. I can't make it the second page or anything like that. 
um, I can do it over here, but I can't do it in the sidebar because this is notice that it, it like changes it up here. It's just that first version. Um, so, but I can work in the second version over here. Uh, so it's not really an exception. I still can't access this from anywhere else in the graph, um, but it allows me to be able to look at it and use it for a reference if I'm creating the next version of something because it makes it really useful uh, for me uh, when I'm creating drafts one to the next. So when I'm creating, uh, I mentioned here, it's useful for controlling drafts. When I'm creating stuff, when I'm brainstorming or organizing ideas, I don't want those inversions because I want that stuff accessible all the time. I want to be able to see that journey uh, back through and, and you know relate it to other ideas and other concepts I may have. Uh, but when I'm in an actual final draft of something, um, I don't want multiple versions of that. I want only one canon version. And so being able to sort of on a page have multiple blocks uh, for my brainstorming and my organizing and then have one block but multiple versions of that block um, for my drafts, uh, that's really, really useful. That makes that page so that only the things that I want to be accessible on that page are. Uh, and I find that to be a very um, a very neat way to work. Uh, one last note about versions. Uh, a few months ago, Connor White Sullivan, the founder of Rome here, kind of called them out as something that would be significantly changed in future updates. So just be aware of that. It may be something that... Uh, uh, that we need to uh, adjust in a future version of the course. I mentioned they can be a bit finicky. I only mean that in this case, because when you focus on a block or you bring it to the sidebar, you can't make those changes anymore. So it's not really finicky. I think that's on purpose, but just be aware of it uh, so that you can't, uh, you can't jump around. You can't use it anymore over here. Um, uh, at least you can't, you can't navigate with it. So just be aware of that. That's not something where it's broken or anything like that. Once you've focused on it or, or moved to a sidebar, it, you're you're kind of you're locked in that version on that spot, uh, which is which is useful for the workflow, but but could be confusing if you weren't sure what was going on. So that's the uh, that's how versions work.